Hi guys, the DUP got a humble address in the House of Commons regarding the restoration of the Northern Ireland Executive. This is basically a thank you message to the King delivered by Parliament. The party's leader Sir Geoffrey Donaldson delivered a long-winded speech to an empty chamber about how both the Tories and Labour value Northern Ireland's position in the Union, and how being part of the Union allows people to identify as they wish, be it Irish, British or other. Sir Geoffrey, of course, took the opportunity to take a swipe at those outside the chamber who have been attempting to undermine his authority, but also those in the DUP who've been up to no good. Have a listen. Thank the Shadow Secretary of State for giving way. He is absolutely right in what he is saying, which is why in our seven tests we talked about fulfilling the Acts of Union, whilst others who hadn't bothered to read the original Acts of Union, who didn't know what they were talking about, who seek to rewrite history, who declare themselves as the champions of unionism but don't know their facts, talked about restoring something that would mean customs checks on goods maybe between Northern Ireland and Great Britain, would mean tariffs on goods uh, manufactured in Northern Ireland being sold in Great Britain. This is the kind of nonsense that our detractors daily pump out they should check their facts, know their history and understand what they're talking about, Mr Deputy Speaker. Hey, to the right honourable gentleman, we've just had a, a wonderful example of the persuasive power of his argument. And, you know, whoever we are, whatever view we hold, getting your facts right is really quite basic to doing our job in this place. And- <laughs> OK, but <laughs> there's a bit of a problem here. OK, so <laughs> Geoffrey Donaldson said that His party was about maintaining the acts of union, while the extremists within unionism, including members of the DUP, were talking about restoring the acts of union. Now, there are two acts of union. There's the 1707 Act of Union and there's the 1800 Act of Union, the more up-to-date one, the 1800 one. Now, maybe there's another one, but I I didn't seem to find it. But (laughs) the 1800 Act of Union talks about the Union of Great Britain and Ireland, the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. Now, how do you maintain that act of union? And how do you restore that act of union? Because, <laughs> just for anyone who doesn't know, that, that union does no longer exist. There is no United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. It's the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. The Act of Union 1800 doesn't refer to Northern Ireland. So how do you maintain that and how do you restore it? Now, the only way to restore the Act of Union 1800 would be for Ireland as an island to rejoin the United Kingdom. Now, how would that work? (laughs) I would like to ask either Geoffrey Donaldson or the extremes within unionism. Would there be a referendum in the Republic of Ireland to go along with maybe another one in um, Northern Ireland to become part of the United Kingdom again? Is that how it works? I'm not sure how, what sort of appetite there is for rejoining the United Kingdom in the Republic of Ireland, considering that the UK, or I should say Great Britain, is no longer a member of the single market, and the United Kingdom, as it stands, is not a member of the European Union. So I'm not sure what the polling is like to <laughs> to restore the island of Ireland to the United Kingdom. But that would be restoring the Acts of Union, 1800. So I once again, I don't know what Geoffrey Donaldson is talking about by, by maintaining the Act of Union, 1800, because that act is no longer valid, because it has been overwritten. And Robert Buckland, who was the Attorney General, I believe, before, Uh, has said that this is no longer an issue because Parliament overwrites previous acts or over... Maybe overwrite is not the right term I'm using, but the impression is that, in a sense, it overwrites the existing act or law. So the Good Friday Agreement and the the Windsor Framework, along with the Northern Ireland Protocol, in a sense, overwrite... The Act of Union, but they're not even really all that all that related because, once again, the Act of Union talks about the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland. Now, what really is the point here is that the extremists within unionism wanted... They were talking about the Act of Union, but in reality what they're talking about 
is getting Northern Ireland out of the single market. Northern Ireland is part of the single market as a direct consequence of Brexit. They're part of the single market when it comes to goods. That's why there are so many problems getting goods from Great Britain into Northern Ireland because Great Britain is not in the single market. Northern Ireland is in the single market. And while Northern Ireland's position in the single market is different to other parts of the single market, it's still problematic to you know, quote unquote. So the only way to get rid of the, <laughs> well, to get Northern Ireland out of the single market would be for, I don't know, the British government to decide to tear up the Windsor framework. And they're not going to do that. So the unionists back in 2016 who thought, well, if we vote to leave the European Union, what will happen is there'll be a hard border put on the island of Ireland. They didn't understand the Good Friday Agreement. And they still don't seem to understand the Good Friday Agreement if they think that restoring the acts of union will put a hard border on the island of Ireland. They don't understand it, and maybe Jeffrey Donaldson doesn't understand it. Or maybe I don't understand it. Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.